Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the channel. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we are going to be sewing. We're going to be sewing along to my new Nomi summer pattern. The number is ME2040. I am so excited about my pattern. I think this dress is perfect for summer. It features strap variations as well as length variations. You have a front slit, you have bust and waist darts, you have a side seam invisible zipper with pockets. So I feel like it's the perfect summer dress. And I love that you can also transition this into fall. You could pair it with a turtleneck, even some tights and some boots, or you can just remove the bodice altogether and have a really nice cute skirt. Just add like a waistband to it and you're good to go. So I love the possibilities with this dress and I'm really excited to make it. For this video, I'll be sewing along to view A on the pattern. If you have any questions as far as fabric, I am using 100% rayon. So it's really nice, lightweight, and it's flowy. And also for size, I cut the 22W and I didn't make any adjustments to it. Go ahead and cut out the pattern pieces that you need to make for view A, cut out your fabric, transfer all your markings, and let's get started sewing. Again, I'll be making view A in this video. If you ever have any questions concerning the type of fabric that would be great for this pattern, you can always look on the back at suggested fabrics. There is a list here of different types of fabrics that will be great for this pattern. I'm really excited to get started. Go ahead and cut out all your pieces and let's start sewing. The first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and fuse our interfacing to the wrong side of our bodice front, as well as to the wrong side of our bodice back. So this here is the wrong side of my fabric. And you can see that I have fused along my interfacing. You should have cut out interfacing for pattern piece number three, as well as for pattern piece number four. Go ahead and fuse those to, again, the wrong side of your bodice front and back. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and sew our darts. This pattern has bust as well as waist darts. There's also waist darts on the back pattern pieces. I've done three here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one here. So you wanna make sure that you transfer your dot as well as your dart legs. And then we are going to pin the legs, making sure that we go through each dart leg. That's gonna ensure that we are sewing our dart neatly. So I'm just gonna fold up like so and I'm gonna come out on the other side of the dart leg and pin it in place. Same thing here, I'm gonna go through one dart leg, come out on the other and pin it in place. Okay, once you have your dart pinned in place, now we can go to the sewing machine. We can back stitch here at the widest part and we're going to stitch all the way down to the point. When you get to the end, don't back stitch here, just leave some long thread tails and we'll tie a knot to secure the stitch. Let's go ahead and stitch our darts in place now. Once you have your dart sewn, you just wanna take those threads and tie a knot. Once you have your knot, then you can clip off your loose threads. I've done so already. And now we can go ahead and press our dart going down toward the waist. So again, after you have your dart sewn and you tie a knot at the end, you can cut off your threads after you have it secured and just press your darts going down toward the waist. You wanna go ahead and do your other darts the same exact way. I've done my two on the back pieces as well as apply the interfacing. At this step, you can go ahead and do your darts for your lining pieces as well. That way you already have them done once we get to the lining step. That's totally optional though, you don't have to do them. But if you want to go ahead and knock out all of your darts, you can go ahead and do them now. Once we have your darts sewn on your front as well as your back bodice piece, I'm gonna go ahead and put the front to the side for just a moment. And then I'm gonna grab my two back pieces here. Again, these are the ones that are interfaced. I'm not working on the lining just yet. And with right sides facing, going to match these up, we're gonna sew our center seam at a 5 of an inch seam allowance. As you can see, I've gone ahead and finished off my edges because again, this dress has a side seam zipper, not a center back seam zipper. So we are going to put these pieces right sides facing and we're gonna pin them in place. Okay, once you have it pinned, we can go ahead and stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance.
Okay, now that we have our center back seam sewn, you wanna go ahead and press that open flat. I do recommend going ahead and finishing off your raw edges, whether you use a serger or pinking shears, zigzag stitch, whatever you prefer, go ahead and finish off your raw edges. And now we are going to sew our back to our front bodice on the right side seam. So you wanna make sure that you are, just take a look at the diagram if you're unsure, but just make sure that you have your right side seams together and we are going to stitch them right sides facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some pins and pin it in place. Once you have your right side seam pinned, we can go ahead and sew it at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have your side seam sewn here, again, the right side seam, as you can see, I pressed my seam open flat. Once you have this sewn, we can put this to the side and start to work on the straps. For view A, our shoulder strap pattern piece is number five and you should have cut out two. I've already done one shoulder strap right here, so this is what our straps will look like once we have them both complete. But make sure that you transfer all of the markings that are on the pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. And so what we're gonna do with right sides facing, we're gonna fold this in half like so lengthwise, and we're going to stitch down the long side here using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're not gonna close up any ends. We're just gonna stitch right down the long side of the pattern like so, again, using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, once you have your strap sewn, you can go ahead and trim down your seam and flip it right side out and give it a press like I've done here. So now let's go ahead and grab our bodice. Again, I'm working on the one that has the interfacing. We're not working on the lining just yet. You should have transferred some dots on the top of your front bodice. We're gonna grab our straps and we are going to pin them in place. I'm gonna find my dots here and I'm gonna line that up. And my strap at the bottom of it, the slant is like so. You can take a double look at your diagram just to make sure that you have the ends of your straps going in the right direction. And so again, I'm going to just match them up right here at the markings, making sure that I have raw edges even, and I'm going to pin it in place. Gonna find my markings that I transferred and match up my circles here. Again, your dots should be matching on your straps to your bodice. Raw edge is even, and then go ahead and pin it in place. Once you have them pinned, and now we can take it to the sewing machine or just baste across just to hold the shoulder straps in place. Okay, once you have your straps basted on, we can go ahead and put the main fabric to the side and grab our lining. Now for me, I'm using the same fabric as my lining, but you may have a different contrasting fabric or maybe just a solid. But again, this is my lining fabric here. You wanna stitch it up the same way that we did for the front. Go ahead and sew up your darts if you haven't done it yet. Stitch your center back seam together as well. For the side seam though, you want to be careful to make sure that you're stitching this so that when you place it right sides facing, you are in fact matching up everything with your side seams in your front and your back. You don't wanna accidentally stitch the opposite side and then when you go to lay it right sides facing, it doesn't match. So again, definitely make sure when you're sewing your lining that you're paying attention to your side seam and making sure that you are sewing it so that it will be right sides facing. So once you go through the steps to stitching up your lining, doing the same exact thing that we did for the main fabric, along the lower edge, you want to press up 5 eighths of an inch I have gone ahead and pressed up 5 eighths of an inch here. As you can see, I did stitch a 5 eighths of an inch seam going across. For me, that just makes it easier for me to just fold it up and press. That's totally optional though. You do not have to do a stitch. You can just take your seam gauge and fold up and press. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to a quarter of an inch. Okay, now that we have trimmed down our seam allowance here on the lower edge of our lining, now we can go ahead and place this right sides facing to our main fabric piece. So I'm just going to match this up here. What we're gonna do is at the beginning here, we're gonna start about two inches in. Again, we have to install a zipper here, so we need to make sure that we're leaving some space. So I'm gonna place a pin here to remind me to not sew past this. 
and I'm just going to start pinning in place. Okay, once you have your lining pinned onto your main fabric bodice along the neck edge like so, you can go ahead and stitch it in place. Again, you want to make sure that you start as well as stop two inches from the raw edge. That way we'll be able to install our zipper. You also want to make sure that you leave the openings between the two markings here along the back. So as you can see, I put a little pin going this way so I know not to stitch between these openings because we need to bring the straps through here. So I'm going to start stitching here, come to this first dot, back stitch, cut my threads, leave this open, start back stitching here, come on over to this dot, back stitch, leave this open, start back stitching here and stitch all the way along here till we get to within two inches from the raw edge. Let's go ahead and stitch this together now using a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now that you have your lining sewn onto your main fabric, you want to go ahead and just give it a double check to make sure you don't have any folds or any puckles here along your seam. You want everything to be nice and smooth. So just give it a good look once you're happy with it. Now we can go ahead and put this to the side. We're not going to trim the seam just yet. We're going to do that after we attach the straps to the back bodice. But until we get to that step, we're not going to trim. We're not going to do the understitching. We will in a later step. So for now, we can go ahead and put the bodice to the side and start to work on the skirt. To begin working on the skirt, we're going to take our skirt front, which is pattern piece number six, and we're going to stitch it to the side front, which is pattern piece number seven. So with the right sides facing, we're going to stitch again our side front to our front. For me, I like to place my fabric the same way that it is on the diagram, especially when I need to match up specific sides, like I need to leave an opening on the left side. It can get a little confusing for me if I have my fabric facing differently from the illustration. So that's just a tip that I wanted to share. I recommend having your fabric placed the same exact way, especially when you need to stop at certain points or markings on specific sides of the garment. So with right sides facing, I am going to match this side front up to the front on this side here. You should have also transferred some notches. Those are going to help you out a lot. So I will pin that side and I'm also going to pin this side here as well. Now for this side here, you want to make sure that you stop at that circle down here for your split. Now with the split, you can definitely move your marking up if you prefer to show a little bit more leg or you can move it down. That's totally personal preference. If you do not, again, want to just follow the circle on the pattern. You have your side front, your right sides facing. Go ahead and start pinning in place, matching up your notches that you transferred. Okay, once you have your side front pinned onto your front, we can go ahead and stitch it using a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that we have our front and side fronts sewn, here's a look at the inside of mine here. I went ahead and pressed my seams open flat. The next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and start reinforcing some sides of our skirts to start preparing for the pockets as well as for the zipper. So I have the right side of my fabric facing up. Again, this is a skirt front. For the reinforced stitch, we're going to be doing it right along the seam line at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. So again, we're just going to do, here's my notch here, 2 inches above the notch, 2 inches below the notch. We're just going to do some reinforcing here right along the seam line. Let's go ahead and do that for the left side of our skirt front. Okay, now that we have reinforced here, again, two inches above your notch here along the side and two inches below it along your seam line, five eighths of an inch. Now we can reinforce our pockets. So for our pockets, we're gonna do the same thing, very similar, you're gonna go an inch above and an inch below your dots. You're not gonna be able to go a full inch below here along the lower dot, but definitely get some reinforcing in through here on all of your dots, again, along the seam line. We want to do some reinforcing here, about an inch on each side of the circles. You want to stitch right through them about an inch just to reinforce them. 
So do that for all of your pockets. I have all of mine here. And I also finished off the curved edge of my pockets as well. Let's go ahead and do our reinforcing now. Okay, I have my pockets here. I've done all of my reinforcing, so I have a, a little bit of some loose threads going on here, but I will clean that up um, in the upcoming steps. But go ahead and make sure that you do all your reinforcing for your pockets. And now we're gonna go ahead and start pinning them onto our skirt. So with right sides facing, I'm gonna start here along the right. I'm gonna find a pocket here, and I'm gonna place it down like so. Make sure that you're matching up your notches as well as your dots. And we are going to pin between our dots. We're not gonna pin up here from the top going down. We're just gonna pin between our dots. So make sure that you have it going through your dots. If you did not transfer your dots, definitely pull out your pattern piece and transfer those markings. And I'm gonna pin here at my notch. Now you can go ahead and pin the remaining here. Okay, now that you have it pinned, again, right here from circle to circle, again, we're not pinning up here along the top. We're just pinning from circle to circle. We can go ahead and stitch it on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance from circle to circle on our pockets. I'm going to pin the other one on the same exact way. And that way we can sew both sides while we are at the sewing machine. I'm going to clip away some of the loose threads. I'm going to pin it again the same way that I did the other side from circle to circle. Make sure that you match up your notches, and then we can pin it on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and pin your other side the same exact way like I've done here, and we can go ahead and stitch. Again, we're going to be stitching from dot to dot on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now that we have it sewn right here, again, just between our dots, now we're going to clip to the dots. So go ahead and grab your shears. And again, we're just gonna clip to the dots. Do not clip through your stitching. Just clip to it, do not clip through it. Like so, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm just clipping to the dots. Do not clip through it, just clip to it. Okay, now we can trim down the seam allowance right here where we've clipped between the large dots. Let's just trim down the seam allowance here. And now we can go to the sewing machine, we can give this a press and we can do under stitching right here between our circles. So again, after you have it clipped to the dots, you've trimmed the seam allowance here at the dots. Now we can go ahead and do some understitching right here between the dots. So let's go to the pressing station now, go ahead and give it a press, and then we can do our understitching. With understitching, you wanna make sure that you have your seam allowance facing toward your pocket, and we're just gonna do a row of understitching right here, again, between the dots. Okay, so now we can go ahead and flip our pocket to the inside like so. So just turn your pocket in. Right now it should look like this, but you wanna go ahead and open out the rest of your seam allowance like so where we clipped off at, you should have some seam allowance there. You wanna go ahead and pull those seam allowances out. And now you can go back to the pressing station and give your pocket a really good press. And again, you wanna go ahead and clip away any loose thread. So this is what my pocket looks like along the inside now. And do the same exact thing for the other side. Just flip the pocket to the inside and you wanna make sure that you bring all that seam allowance out. 
This is why we did that reinforcing as well. Just bring all that seam allowance out above where we did the stitching and below it and give everything a really good press. Okay, now that we have our pocket pressed toward the inside like so, now I'm gonna grab my pocket, another pocket here, and I'm gonna lay this one right sides facing. And we are going to be stitching along the curved edge of the pocket. So let's go ahead and grab our pins and pin it in place. Okay, once you have it pinned, I'm gonna pin the other pocket over here the same exact way. And then I'm going to stitch around the curved edge using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Let's go ahead and stitch both pockets now. Okay, I have my pockets sewn like so. This is what the outside looks like. I did do a little bit of basting here along the raw edges on the upper edge of the pockets as well as at the top edge here along the waist. So this is what the inside looks like here. You have a nice clean pocket. And this is what the side opening looks like here. Now once you have your pockets done, we can put the front to the side and start to work on the back. To begin working on our back, the first thing that we're going to do is stitch our center back seam together. So you want to go ahead and just start pinning the center back seam. You should have transferred some notches. You want to pin there. And again, this is pattern piece number eight, our back skirt pattern piece. Once you have the center back seam pinned, now we can go ahead and stitch it using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that you have your center back seam sewn, I have mine sewn here. And I've gone ahead and pressed my seam open flat. Again, this is our center back seam. Now we can go ahead and do some reinforcing on the left side, the same exact way that we did for our front pattern pieces. So right at our notch, you want to stitch two inches above the notch and two inches below. You honestly can just sew one straight line again. You want to just go two inches above and below your notch. So let's do that same reinforcing that we did on the front. Let's do it to the back on the left side edge. Okay, now that we have the reinforcing stitch done here along the left side edge, now we're gonna stitch our right side seams together. So let's go ahead and grab our front skirt. So now with right sides facing, I'm gonna match up my right side seam edge for the front with the right of the back. With the right sides facing, I'm going to match up my notches as well as my circles, and I am just going to pin everything in place. All right, once you have your right side seam pinned together, now we can go ahead and stitch it. And again, you wanna make sure that you keep the finished edge of your pocket out of the way. We're gonna be stitching on a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And again, make sure that you are not on the left side here. This is where we will install the zipper. We're only sewing the right front and back together now. Okay, now that we have sewn our right side seam, this is what my seam looks like here. I just came back from the pressing station, pressing my seam open flat. This is what the inside of the pocket looks like here. Nice and clean. And this is the right side of the pocket. Just need to give that another press right there. But this is what the pocket looks like. Love this pocket. So once you have your side seam sewn and you give your pocket a press, now we can go ahead and grab our bodice and we can lay it right sides facing to the skirt to sew our waist seam. Okay, here's my bodice here. Again, this one with the interfacing was my main fabric and this one here without the interfacing is my lining. So you wanna make sure that you lay your main fabric right sides facing to your skirt. So here's my skirt here and I'm gonna lay it right sides facing. So this should be our left side here. You wanna go ahead and match up your notches and pin in place. 
Again, make sure that you keep your lining free as well as your straps. Make sure that your straps are out of the way. You don't want to accidentally sew those. And let's just go ahead and match up all of our seams and pin in place. Okay, once you have your bodice sewn to your skirt, again, I have my lining out of the way. Now we can go ahead and stitch this in a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once we have a stitch, you can press your seam going up toward your bodice. Let's go ahead and stitch our waist seam in place now. Okay, now that we have our bodice sewn onto our skirt, this is what my seam is looking like here. We can go ahead and trim down our seam allowance and press our seam going up toward the bodice. You do want to make sure before you trim that you just like the way your seams are matching up. So just give everything a quick look over. Make sure again that you don't have any folds or any puckers that you need to kind of smooth out. Once you're happy with everything, then again, go ahead and trim your seam and press it going up toward the bodice. An optional thing that you could do is go ahead and finish off your seam allowance before we get ready to install the zipper. I will be finishing off my main fabric bodice as well as the side seams of my skirt as well as my skirt. That's just something that I want to go ahead and do before I install the zipper. Another thing that you can also do is apply some interfacing here where we will be installing the zipper that's just going to give the zipper a little bit more support and stability in our dress. So you can cut a strip of interfacing about three fourths of an inch wide and you can just apply it right here along the bodice as well as the skirt just where we will be installing the zipper. Again that's just going to give us a little bit more stability right here in this area because we do have a lot going on. We have pockets, we have zippers, and we definitely want to make sure that we are giving the zipper some support and stability. So I will be finishing off my seams again, and then I will also be applying a little strip of interfacing here to give some stability to the zipper. I'm going to go ahead and trim, press this up, finish the seam, and apply the interfacing, and then we can move on to installing the zipper. Okay, I have my seam pressed up here. You definitely do not have to finish off your seam allowance um, because this will get covered up with our lining, but I just went ahead and finished off mine. And so I did cut a little strip of interfacing here and I'm just going to fuse it onto the side seam. I don't need to fuse it all the way up here to the top because there's already interfacing there. So I'm just going to go to the pressing station and just fuse this on. Again, we just want to stabilize where we're going to be installing the zipper and I'm going to do it to this side as well. Once I have it fused, I'm going to finish off my side seam seam allowance. Okay, to install our zipper, I'm going to be using this zipper here. It is a little bit longer than what's required for the dress, but that's okay. I'll just trim off the excess. So I have this side right here, right sides facing up. Again, we're going to be on the left side of the dress going to go ahead and unzip here and so this is how my zipper is looking. I'm going to move this one here out of the way. Just going to be working on this side. You want to make sure that you have your zipper tape as well as your raw edges together like so. So make sure that you don't have it like this. Make sure you have it down like this. Making sure that we have our coils along our seam line and the top zipper stop 5 eighth of an inch down from the top because again we still need to stitch this close. We can go ahead and place our zipper and baste it in place. I'm going to grab some pins first. I'm going to grab my ruler as well as my tailor's chalk. So again, from this upper edge here, you want to be down 5 eighths of an inch. Just going to place a mark right here. So this is where I want the zipper stop to be. And you can even come down just a little hair more just to make sure that you're out of the way because again, we do need to stitch it, we need to trim it, we need to do understitching. If you want to, you can transfer your 5 8 of inch seam line to make sure that you have your tape along that. But I'm just going to go ahead and start pinning it in place. Again, you want to make sure that you have your zipper teeth along your seam line. If you need to, you can measure that over. I am right here along my seam line here. I have the zipper teeth 5 8 of an inch away from the raw edge and I'm just going to pin that in place. Now there are many different ways to install invisible zippers so if you have a preferred method on how to install your zipper you can absolutely go ahead and install it that way. I'm just placing pins along the zipper tape now and we're going to stop the pins at our notch that we transferred. 
The next thing we can do is go ahead and base it in place. You can base it in place using your sewing machine or you can base it in place by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and just base mine in place using my machine. And I'm also gonna go ahead and pin the other side of the zipper tape in place the same way that we did this side. If it helps, you can just transfer a little marking here at your waist seam and transfer that on the other side as well. That way you know exactly where your waist seam needs to match up. Okay, I just basted my zipper in, so I'm gonna just zip it up just to take a look at my seam. I'm really looking here because I wanna see if these seams here match up and they are a little bit off, as you can see. So I'm gonna remove one side of my basting and just kinda of maneuver it a little bit more so I'm getting a nice clean seam right here with my waistline seam. So again, this is what it looks like basted in. You definitely wanna baste it in place first before you just stitch it in. That way you'll be able to see if you need to make adjustments here. But I really do like the way that it looks, so I'm just going to undo the basting on one side. Make sure when you're doing this out with the pocket that you keep the finished edge of the pocket out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do another basting stitch. Okay, I have both sides basted on. My seam looks a lot better here going across, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my permanent stitch. This is a standard zipper foot, and this is an invisible zipper foot. On the bottom of it, it has a groove right here. The coils actually go into this, and it pushes the coils over for you, making it really easy to install an invisible zipper. If you don't have this foot, though, you can definitely use this. You just want to push your coils over so that you can stitch right beside your zipper teeth and get a really nice, clean, invisible zipper. Whichever foot you prefer to use, let's go ahead and attach it. I'm gonna use my invisible zipper foot. I've never done a video with this foot before, so I'm really excited to show it. I do have several on my channel using a standard zipper foot, but not any using an invisible zipper foot. So I'm gonna show you all just how great and easy it is to use this. But again, if you don't have this foot, you can use a regular zipper foot, and I'll put a link below that you can watch how to do it if you need a refresher on how to do so. With an invisible zipper foot, you want to snap it on the same exact way as you would a regular foot or according to however your machine does it. Mine's just snap in here. It's just, and I'm just going to put my fabric up under here like so. I'm gonna drop down the presser foot first. And I don't know if you can notice, but it, that little groove has already pushed over the coils there. So I'm gonna be able to stitch right here beside it. Again, if you don't have the zipper foot while you're stitching, you can just use your finger to push the coils over. Okay, now that you have your zipper sewn in, I'm just gonna go ahead and get my dress together, take a look at my zipper kind of tight right in here. I got the seam there to match up really nicely. Again, after I did the basting stitch and I tested it out and I didn't like it, I just undid one side, pinned it back, and then basted it in place until I got it to where I liked it at, and then I just did the permanent stitch. So again, if you do your basting stitch and you don't like the way it's lining up, just unpick it and then just repin it, baste it in place, and stitch it down. So this is what my side seam zipper looks like. Make sure that your pocket is free. Here's a close up of my seam here. Now we can give everything a really nice press. So it looks like along the inside here. I probably should have used um, tan thread, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clip away this loose thread here. Just kind of clean up the zipper area. Okay, once you're happy with your zipper, again, you can remove your basting stitches out. Now we need to close up the remainder of the skirt. I'm gonna go ahead and just pin the remaining of the seam together.
Okay, once you have the remainder of the seam pinned, we're going to come to the left of our seam where we stopped sewing at. So I stopped sewing right here. I really could have stopped up here. I mean, my notch, I think, is up here. So I don't know why I sewed down this far, but this is where we are. <laughs> But we're going to come to the left of our stitch where we stopped at, and we're going to go about a quarter of an inch above it. So this is where I stopped. I'm going to come to the left of it just a little bit, and I'm going to go above it about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put my needle down here. I'm going to back stitch, and then just continue sewing all the way down. I'm going to be sewing on a 5 of an inch seam allowance. So let's go ahead and close up the remaining of the seam. Okay, I have my seam here sewn, the remaining of my zipper seam. So this is what it looks like on the inside here. And on the outside, you should have a nice clean seam. Now I just need to go and give my seam a good press and press it open. After I have it pressed, if you have a long zipper like I do here, I am just going to go to the machine and do a zigzag stitch to go across the coils and then I'm just going to trim off the excess here at the bottom with my pinking shears so that it kind of resembles the end of this zipper here. You can always cover it with a piece of scrap fabric if you like, but I'm just going to trim mine off with my pinking shears. So first I'm going to go ahead and press the seam open and then again, just put a couple zigzag stitches or you can just get a needle and thread and just go around the coils just a little bit to create a new zipper stop. And then you can just trim off the excess. Okay, I have created a new zipper stop here. So I'm gonna grab my pinking shears and just trim off about an inch or so below. So this is what my zipper looks like now. If you like, you can go ahead and stitch your zipper tape down to your seam allowance just so it's nice and flat and it's not moving about in your dress. That's totally optional, but once you have your zipper installed, you have pressed your seam open, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. The next step is for us to go ahead and try on our dress. When you try it on, then you can go ahead and insert your straps into the back. That may be kind of hard to do if you are doing this by yourself and no one is there to help you kind of pin the back of the strap. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and slip the straps into the opening that we left. Remember, we left an opening at the beginning. You can go ahead and slip those in there and baste them in place and then try your dress on and see if you need to make any adjustments. But again, if you do have someone there that can help pin, go ahead and try it on and then slip your straps through the opening just so you can get them where you would like them so that it's comfortable around your shoulders. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, once you have your straps in the place that's comfortable, so this is my straps here along the inside. I am gonna go ahead, I have them basted. I'm gonna go ahead and secure them by stitching across here, closing up the opening that we left when we attach the lining to the bodice. So let's go ahead and secure our straps in place. Again, once you have tried on your dress and you're happy with where the straps fit, now we can go ahead and secure them in place and then trim down our seam. Once you have your ties secure, then we can go ahead and continue stitching here all the way to the edge since now we have our zipper installed. So let's go ahead and stitch the remaining of our bodice to our lining here along the top neck edge. Once you have the remaining of your neck edge sewn, now we can go ahead and trim the seam. Now that you have trimmed your seam, now we're gonna go ahead and do some understitching once we have it trimmed. You wanna make sure that you have your seam going toward your lining. And I'm gonna start my understitching about an inch from the zipper. I'm just gonna understitch all the way from that side to here, and again, stopping about an inch away from this zipper. Okay, now that we have done our understitching here along our lining, the next thing that we're gonna do is take our lining and we're gonna fold it over onto the right sides facing with the main bodice. We're gonna fold it over onto it like so. What we're gonna do now is pin down our lining onto the zipper tape here. We're gonna pin that down and we're gonna get ready to sew it. So I'm just going to fold this over here and just start pinning it down in place. I'm 
I'm gonna make sure I have my folded edge just going slightly past my seam. Make sure that you still have the lower edge of your lining folded up. And we're just gonna stitch straight down here along our zipper tape. Again, make sure that you have on your zipper foot and you just wanna stitch close to the zipper teeth, being careful not to stitch on them. We're gonna do the same thing for the other side here of our lining. So let's go ahead and pin our linings in place now and we're just gonna stitch straight down them using our zipper foot getting close to the zipper teeth. Okay, now that we have stitched down our lining onto the zipper tape, we can clip away the top edge here. Don't clip away too much, but we can trim down some of that bulk at that corner. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just going to flip the lining to the inside. Just take a look at my zipper, see how everything is looking. Everything is meeting up nicely here along the top. You can add a hook and eye closure up here just for a little bit more security. I'm probably gonna do that with my zipper because I don't wanna stitch down any lower here, especially with my zipper stop stopping right there together. So if you have a little opening there, you can always just add a little hook and eye just to secure those ends up at the top. But this is how everything is looking on the outside and this is how it is looking along the inside. So I'm gonna flip my dress right side out. The next thing that we need to do is secure our lining and we can do that by slip stitching it in place. That's what I'm going to do. If you prefer to do a stitch in a ditch, you can absolutely do that. But I am just going to take this folded edge and just place it slightly over this seam here and I'm just going to do a slip stitch. So that's what I'm gonna be doing and once I have that done, I will be right back and we can move on to the last step, which is to do the hem. Okay, I have my lining slip stitch closed on the inside of my dress. So this is how my lining looks here along the inside. Everything is nice and closed up. Again, you could have done the slip stitch or you could have did a stitch in a ditch. The last thing for us to do is our hem. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and finished off my raw edge with my serger. You can choose to finish off your raw edge or you can fold in the quarter of an inch of the raw edge and stitch it like so to create your narrow hem. The choice is yours. You do wanna go ahead and try on your dress though to level out your hem. Once you have it leveled out, then you can go ahead and create your narrow hem. Again, you can serge your edge and just fold up like I did or fold in a quarter of an inch and then fold up your 5 eighth of an inch for your narrow hem. Down here on your opening, you will create the same narrow hem and on the corners, you want to fold them up and fold in the opening edge. Once you fold it up and crease it, you'll have like a little point there. At that point, you can fold up the corner and then fold up your sides. We've kind of taken out that little triangle and that bulk, which you can trim that out as well. For stitching the opening edge, you want to start stitching up your 5 8 of an inch narrow hem. Once you get to the dot, you would pivot across, come back down still doing a narrow hem and just continue doing your narrow hem all the way along the hem of your dress. Once you have your hem done, you are all done with your dress. Again, this is my pattern, Know Me ME 2040, and we made view A. Well, that is all for the sew along, and I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know down below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.